Welcome, pilots! This video is part of a series showcasing the use of regular cruisers for combat site exploration in EVE Online. If you're a young MR pilot within your first month of skill training, and you're looking for PvE combat against NPC pirates, this video is for you. If you're a brand new player flying a frigate, you might want to watch my MR Frigates for New Players video first. That video guide will introduce you to combat site exploration in MR space discussing early skill training, weapon systems, and frigate fits suitable for running some of the easier combat sites. This video will pick up where it left off, guiding you through your journey to running slightly more difficult combat sites in a cruiser. You can find the fits presented in this video on my website over at RileyEntertainment.com, as well as additional PvE fits for all Amar cruisers for both Alpha and Omega pilots. If you're still waiting on skill training before buying your first Amar cruiser and want to try out a destroyer in the meantime, I might recommend this Coercer fit. You'll be able to run sites like the Blood Raider Human Farm, or its Sancha's Nation equivalent, the Sancha Acclimatization Facility, as well as the Blood or Sancha Hideout. These sites are restricted to destroyer class ships or smaller, so you won't be able to run them in a cruiser. To fly Amar cruisers, there are a handful of skills you'll first need to train. The most obvious is a Mar Destroyer, followed by a Mar Cruiser. Since the combat-focused Mar Cruisers have bonuses to energy turrets, you'll also need to train medium energy turret. Mar Cruisers generally also have reasonably sized drone bays, making it important to train drones as well. I recommend getting all of these skills to level 3 before you actually buy your first cruiser. I also consider some of your armor and engineering skills to be extremely important, as they open up many new fitting opportunities. Training hull upgrades to level 4 allows you to equip a Tech 2 damage control module, and opens up the resistance-based armor compensation skills. Training both mechanics and repair systems to level 4 allows you to equip a Tech 2 medium armor repair. Training energy grid upgrades to level 3 allows you to equip a Tech 2 medium cap battery, or cap recharger helping you run your armor repair for much longer during combat. Training weapon upgrades to level 4 allows you to equip Tech 2 heat sinks. It also opens up advanced weapon upgrades, which reduces the power grid consumption of all weapon turrets. Once these core skills have been trained, I also recommend continuing to train your gunnery and drone support skills. For weapon turrets, this includes controlled bursts, motion prediction, rapid firing, sharpshooter, Surgical Strike, and Trajectory Analysis. For drones, it includes Drone Avionics, Drone Navigation, Drone Durability, Drone Sharpshooting, and Drone Interfacing. MR pilots can start out with just light drones and cruisers. You can also consider training Shield Management to at least level 3, along with some of the core navigation skills such as Navigation, Evasive Maneuvering, Warp Drive Operation, and Acceleration Control. My first Amar PvE Combat Cruiser fit is a molar fit with pulse lasers, an afterburner, and an active armor tank. The molar has bonuses to medium energy turret damage, and armor resistances. Its drone bay and drone bandwidth only allow for up to three light drones, so you won't need strong drone skills to make good use of this ship. These factors, coupled with its high armor and hull hit points, make it a great candidate for your first PvE fit cruiser. I chose the Meta Level 4 Heavy Pulse Lasers, as these offer the highest range and damage output of all Tech 1 Medium Pulse Lasers. I fit a probe launcher to the fifth high power slot, which does unfortunately reduce the overall damage potential of the ship. This decision is in part due to fitting concerns, but it also allows you to explore without having to dock up to change modules every time you probe down a site. In order to make the ship fully cap stable, I fit a large compact cap battery and a Tech 2 cap recharger in the mid slots, along with a capacitor control circuit rig. The active armor tank consists of a Tech 2 medium armor repair, a Tech 2 damage control, and compact EM and thermal energized membranes in the low slots. The two auxiliary nanopump rigs help improve the armor repair rates significantly, and the two Tech 2 heat sinks help bring the ship's total DPS up to around 200 with multi frequency crystals. The drone bay is filled with acolytes, which deal EM damage. In the Amar Frigate's video guide, I recommended combat anomalies like the Blood or Sancha hideaway. 
or once you've gained some PDE experience, the Blood or Sancha Refuge. These are still great sights to run, no matter what ship you're flying. But now that you're in a cruiser with a much stronger tank, I can also recommend the Blood or Sancha Den. There are two variations of these sights. With the recommended Mollerfet, you should be able to handle either without any issue. In general, you can stick with multi-frequency crystals at a range of about 10 kilometers. Use keep at range when engaging with frigates or destroyers, and orbit when engaging with missile batteries or cruisers or larger ships. If you find your tank is starting to fail, you can always pull range and switch to standard or even radio crystals. If you're itching to use your probe launcher, your new cruiser is quite capable in several extra combat signatures that I left out of the Amar Frigates video guide. The first is the Blood Lookout, or the near equivalent Sancha Lookout. Your tactics here won't need to change much from a den site, though you'll likely be starting with radio crystals due to your initial distance from the NPCs. The second site is the Blood Raider Intelligence Collection Point. While you won't be as competitive as more experienced pilots flying faction cruisers, this is a great site to gain PDE combat experience. You'll face a large number of frigates, many of which will hit you with tracking disruptors and the loot potential can be quite staggering if you get particularly lucky. The tracking disruptors will probably be quite annoying, and you may find yourself having to switch to standard or radio crystals throughout the fight. The final site I'll mention is the Sancha Command Relay Outpost. There are a large number of destroyers in here, so the incoming DPS can be quite high. You might want to stick with radio crystals at a range of around 25 kilometers until you've whittled down the mob a little. If you're finding that you're having no trouble surviving the sites I've recommended so far, you have plenty of ways to tweak the Mauler fit to improve its performance. This updated fit replaces the cap recharger in the mid-slot with a sensor booster, improving the ship's targeting speed. It also removes the energized membranes in the low slots with a pair of tracking enhancers, making it easier to hit all those pesky little frigates. While the fit is no longer cap stable, it still provides plenty of time for the ship to escape if you run into trouble. My next Amar PvE Combat Cruiser fit is an Omen fit with higher range beam lasers, an afterburner, and an active armor tank. The Omen has bonuses to medium turret capacitor usage and rate of fire. Its drone bay is much larger than the Mauler's, so you'll probably want to train your drone skills up to level 5, and eventually train medium drone operation, as you have enough bandwidth to field 3 medium drones and 2 light drones. Sticking with just light drones can still be a valid choice, as you'll have enough space in your drone bay for a few backups in case you lose some of them. The main difference here is the use of metal level 4 heavy beam lasers rather than pulse lasers. The fit does sacrifice one of the heat sinks for a capacitor power relay in the low slots to retain cap stability. Again, you can tweak this fit to include modules such as sensor boosters, tracking computers, or tracking enhancers, or an extra heat sink. With this Omen fit, you'll have no trouble running all the combat sites previously mentioned, though you'll likely be doing so from a little further distance due to the extra range on the beam lasers. If you're looking for a bit more of a challenge, this extra range puts you in a place where you'll also be able to run a site called the Mal Zata Monastery. This site can be quite tricky, with the presence of stasis towers and a large number of cruisers that will hit you with energy neutralizers. Staying out of their range is key to completing this site. You can get a lot of mileage out of cruisers as you continue to train your skills. Bit by bit, you'll gain access to better modules, gain more CPU and power grid for better fitting options, and once you've trained medium beam or pulse laser specialization, access to Tech 2 frequency crystals. On my main Omega clone character, for example, this upgraded beam fit Omen manages to get over 450 DPS with Gleam crystals and a repair rate of over 50 hit points per second. Now that you've expanded your horizons in a cruiser, and are hopefully making plenty of ISK, you might be looking to try out one or both of the Navy Faction cruisers. The Omen Navy issue will feel like a stronger version of the regular Omen, with its bonuses to both range and damage. The Augur Navy issue feels like a stronger Mauler, with bonuses to both damage and armor hit points. Both ships can be fit with either mid-range pulse lasers or long-range beam lasers. I've included example fits for both ships over on my website at RileyEntertainment.com. 
The example Alpha Beam Laser Fit for the Augur and Aviation is capable of running the Sanchez Nation Occupied Mining Colony. Though Alpha pilots may find the site difficult with all the tracking disruption and high incoming DPS. In my test run, I played it particularly safe by whittling down all the ships in the second room before engaging with the foreman. Most combat site explorers eventually end up in special faction cruisers such as the Gila or Orthrus. If you like the idea of sticking with Amar ships, the Phantasm is another good option. There are still more combat sites to explore beyond those I've mentioned throughout this video, such as the Watch or Vigil. Once you have the ISK to easily replace your ship, I encourage you to fearlessly try them out for yourself. If you ever need a little help running any combat site you find in high security space, you can check out my comprehensive library of video guides right here on this channel. If you're looking for a way to support me directly, I recently started a Patreon account for bonus gaming content. You can find the link for it in the description box below. Stay tuned to Riley Entertainment for more EVE Online combat site guides, and smash that like button if you enjoy my content.